Hello, everybody. It's just wonderful to see you here tonight, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Kathy McGowan, and I'm coming to you from Jitarawa country, and I acknowledge the traditional custodians of all our land, and I pay my respects. But tonight, we're up to something really special. This, net, this networking session has come about because we've had so many requests from people asking us, how do you get going? How do you get started? How do you get a group going? So what we've designed for you tonight is a networking session. Um, it includes some theory. It includes some practical exercises. But the real purpose is to introduce you to and remind you that you already know how to network. The different thing is tonight we're networking with purpose. We're networking with design. And we're talking about values, being courageous, being bold, paying it forward. But we're also talking about tonight itself is an example of networking. So you're not going to get away with not talking about yourself. So welcome to tonight. Um, and I'm looking forward to the, spending the next time with you and uh, sharing our skills and our experiences. But now I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the theory of networking and particularly with politics in mind. I want to start with this, what's called the Covey Circle of Control and the circle of influence, and the circle of concern. But in my experience, there's a whole lot of things that are in my circle of concern. Like I really worry about world poverty. I worry about war, um, cyber threat, AI. I get very stressed by the Beetaloo Basin, um, hearing people commit suicide, particularly in the rural areas because of mental health, um, unemployment. So there's a whole lot of things that are actually in my circle of concern, which is that outside circle. It probably tells us we can't do much about your circle of concern. You can worry about it, but it's so far beyond your what you can do. And then he talks about this next circle, the things that you can influence. And that's particularly where we're going to be talking about tonight, is how you can grow your circle of control to have an impact on the things that you can influence that are then going to have an impact on the things that are out of control. So this second circle of influence, so for example, um, I can't do much about, you know, changing the whole world's uh, activity on climate, but I can join a group such as Climate Act Now or Lighter F Footprints, and these groups are able to do advocacy work that can actually have an impact on some of the things that I'm concerned about. And Covey then talks about this inner circle, and this is the most important one. He talks about understanding the things that you can control. So tonight, we're actually going to be working, networking in our circle of control to hopefully have an impact on the things that we can influence that will then have an impact on our circle of concern. And for me, the circle of control is my time my resources, such as my money, and my attitude. And so if I'm more courageous, <laughs> if, I'm able, if I'm deciding that I'm going to actually use my time and my money to do things around poverty and, and global warming, then that's what networking's about. This one is, well, I really love it because what this, is what make, for me, this is what makes networking possible for me and it's – the fact that all of us are connected and that the theory is that there's only six degrees of separation. So we're only six or fewer social connections away from each other. So the theory is that if I know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody, then I know the king. <laughs> so that's the story. And so tonight we're going to be using this idea of people all being interconnected and we're going to say by strategically networking, we can not only find the skills, but we can find the people who share our vision, who might want to do something. And the art is finding the, per the person in this mix, the person who knows the person who knows the person that you want to know. And in my experience, that person is often very closely assigned to me. I'm going to take you through my networking map <laughs> to talk about how all this works. And then in a little while later, you're all going to get a chance to do this yourself. 
So you've got to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the thing is, like, if I just take the example of me, that's me in the middle, and that's my circle of control, and the next circle out is a circle of influence, and then on the outer circle, like things that you've got no control about, like let's say parliament and the laws. So how do I, Kathy McGowan, living on my farm in the Indigo Valley, use my networks to have an impact on those things that I'm concerned about? So I'm going to give you three examples. Let's just say poverty. Like personally, I'm really cross that we haven't, the government hasn't done anything about the unemployment, the dole rate. And, you know, $40, $40 a day is just not enough to live on. So that's in my circle of concern. And I know that Parliament of Australia has got control over it. So if you look there, you can see Kathy's in the middle and I'm going to take you through how I was able to have an influence in Parliament through using my networks. So I've got a friend who's a social worker in Albury-Wodonga and I was complaining to her over a coffee a couple of weeks ago about how disappointed I was by the Labor government not doing anything about raising the rate. And she said, oh, I know somebody who is involved in the organisation ACOS. ACOS is the Australian Council of Social Services. And she said, that friend was telling me that they're organising a letter to be published in the paper calling on the government to raise the rate. Would you be interested? I said, would I indeed? And she said, well, I'll get somebody to get in touch with you. So the next week, someone from ACOS rang and said, Kathy, I hear you're interested. We're putting together this letter. We're going to put in all the national newspapers. There's going to be 600 prominent people and other people. Um, would you be interested in having your name there? And I said, yes, please. And she said, then we're going to use that letter to uh, pressure um, our members of parliament to do something in the budget, which is tomorrow night. So I did do that. I, I, had, I added my name, put a donation in, and I watched last week as across the country, I think there were seven, maybe 11 uh, Labor Party people also added their names. And I bet that tomorrow night in the budget, the raise the rate will grow up. Now, it's not that I did that. It's just that through my friend, I found out what another organisation was doing and I was able to add my uh, stuff to that. So that's one example of networking and I'm, I'm sure you're all familiar with it. If we go down below up, the other example I want to give you is about climate. So as many of you would be, we care about climate. So, but how, rather than just writing a letter, I'm, I'm really keen to be working with other people on this. So in this case, I, I use my networks to join a group. So I find out that in Melbourne, but also in Sydney, there's really good groups and I've joined Lighter Footprints. And as a member of that group, and, I, and I'm a member of a few groups that do this, we organise conferences, we write letters, we sign petitions and we have demonstrations and we use our networks to put pressure on our members of parliament and then through our members of parliament to get them to change rules. So the second example I want to show you there is how by joining a group, you can really have a, an impact on your circle of influence and through that, your circle of control. Many of you know this. Many of you are already in groups. But the third example, the one I really want to talk about tonight, <laughs> is how we networked to get Voices for Indi established and eventually get our own member of parliament. But here's how it worked. We didn't know what we were the outcome of our networking, so it's funny looking at a map like this. But in the first instance, I got in touch with three friends and I said, how about we get together, would you like to come, we have a coffee and we talk about forming a group to maybe run an independent <laughs> that maybe could make our seat marginal. And it took enormous courage to do that because I was worried. Um, I had to have a lot of, be very bold, and I also had to have a, uh, what I would call my elevator pitch. I had to work out what I was actually asking people to do. And in this case, my elevator pitch was get together, have a coffee, 
talk about local politics and see if we could form a group, see if there's enough interest. And to my, de- that was a phone call. And to my delight, three of those friends were. And when we had our initial meeting, they said to me, but Kathy, I know other people who'd also be interested. <laughs> and I said, well, would you ring them up? We'll make a meeting time and date. So we, the three of us organised it. We'd meet in Wangaratta at the library on a Saturday at 10 o'clock for an hour. And through that initial networking of three people, 12 people turned up for that initial meeting. We shared the same elevator pitch and we got together. And as a result of that work, our networking, we formed a group and it became incorporated and it was called Voices for Indi. And then that group did the next stage of networking was we ran campaigns, we put in toolkits, we had kitchen table conversations, we eventually selected a candidate and we got our own member of parliament. So what I wanted to talk to you about with this networking map is none of this happened by accident. None of it happened by staying at home. None of it happened by wanting the world to be a better place. It all happened by doing something. It all happened by action. So what I want to talk to you about tonight is how do you do this networking by action? How do you do networking by design? But here's what I've learned about networking by design. In the first instance, you've got to be really clear of what is your task. If you're fluffing around, (laughs) everyone else gets confused and you get lost. And so the question I ask myself is what one thing, if I did really well, would make a significant difference? And when I asked myself that question of being an Indi, the answer was make the seat marginal. That one thing would have, I knew it would make a difference. So that was, that was my clarity of task. And it took a lot of thinking and a lot of talking before I got there. But once I got there, I knew I had a clear purpose. So that's my first, th- the first thing I know about networking by design. You've got to have that elevator pitch well worked out. The second is what I call the ask. <laughs> so you've got to work out what you're going to ask people to do when you ring them up and say, look, I, want, I think we should make Indi marginal. Um, my ask is, would you like to come and meet with me for a cup of coffee to talk about it? Now, I asked my friends who I knew had skills and ability, so I didn't just ask anybody. I was a bit strategic in who I asked. The really clear ask, and what I've learned is you want people to say yes. So you've got to have an ask for which the answer is yes. So Not many people say no to come and have a cup of coffee. (laughs) Lots of people would say no if you suggested we were going to run a campaign to, you know, get rid of the member member for Indi. So you start on a little thing that's going to have a yes. And you ask the people, so you're strategic in who you ask. Now, that's all pretty obvious. The next thing wasn't obvious to me. In fact, Judy Brewer told me this. She said, well, your networking is fine, Kathy, but you could spend all your time just having cups of coffee. That's never going to work. What you need to do is set yourself a target and goal. And she said, well, if once we got going and once we'd formed um, Voices for Indi, she said, well, your task is to meet a thousand people a month <laughs> and seeing if you can get them engaged. Now, that was a huge number. You might not start with that number, but I have to say that we did. And once that campaign got underway, everybody was networking with everybody else on that, you know, the six degrees of separation. And we kept a tally to make sure that we'd have those, what we we ended up calling um, strategic conversations. So we would have a thousand strategic um, conversations by the end of the month. And it was all done through our networks. So setting targets and goals really focuses you. The next little tip that I've learned is that you've got to make it easy for people. (laughs) If you make it hard, people won't do it. So you've got to really think, how do I make joining my network easy? And that's when um, 
a communication strategy comes in, like a WhatsApp group, a Slack or a Facebook, and it's one click. You don't want people to have to go through a whole lot of work to join up. And clearly, if in the first instance, membership's free, it makes it much easier for people to come online. But I've seen many a network fall apart because it's too complicated. You have to jump through too many steps. So the second last thing I want to talk about is this thing of social capital. So initially when I started networking, I thought it was um, the networks would um, manage themselves. And I hadn't realised that networking is sort of a verb. You've, you've actually got to do it. And if you don't do it, if you don't maintain your networks, they sort of fall away. And I've also learned that it's the leader, well, in this case was me, I build the social capital that makes the network work. And I call that love and connection. <laughs> like people have got to know you care because if you don't care, and no one else, then no one else is going to care. So you've almost, you've got to have skin in the game and you've got to show that you care. Now that means work in the networks. It means ringing up. Um, it means checking in with people. How are they going? Um, it means having celebrations. It means being inclusive. Uh, often it means name tags if you can't remember their names. But what I've learned is if you're the centre of your network, you can't delegate that task. You've got to pay attention to it because if you don't make the network work, it do, it, it'll die and people go, oh, and then people will complain, well, nobody did, nobody did anything. Well, guess what? Um, you're probably the nobody. And the other thing that I understand about networking, so you've got to have a clear task, you've got to have a good ask, you got you set targets, you make it easy for people, you make it alive by having celebrated joy, but you've also got to manage the risk. <laughs> now, this is really obvious and you all know it, but I'm just going to spend a few minutes just talking about some of the risks in networking and what will go wrong. So what can go wrong in a group? What can go wrong in a network? Well, first off, groups can have dominating personalities and they might have their own idea of what they're achieving, what they're wanting, and it might be totally different to what you want. So you've got to have up your sleeve some tricks. I don't actually mean tricks. I actually mean skill for managing um, personalities because if you don't manage them early, the whole thing can blow up in your face. So that's a little bit about making sure that in the beginning when you have that first meeting and the coffee and you get together and you're talking about what you want to do, that people understand what your purpose is. Like if they totally don't understand your purpose, well, then they're probably not going to work well in your network to doing this. They can go off and set another network up. So you've got to have a way of um, making sure that the personalities and the shared vision is there. The second thing that I've, I've understood about networking is to understand, and Jill, you're going to laugh at this one, it's this, the groups go through uh, and networks go through stages. They form. Um, they often have a big storm um, and then before they can get on to norming and performing, they've got to do quite a little bit of group work. Now, people come to me and particularly during the last election and they said, oh, we've set up a group, we've got a Voices for Indyne, we've started reaching out to the community and we're running kitchen table conversations and we're doing our networks, but, but and then they'd tell me about how it's not working. And I'd say, well, you, this is called the stages of a group and it, most groups grow through it and it's called a storm and you need to manage it because if you don't manage it, um, both the group and the network will fold up. So there's two things there. One is if you haven't already got the skills, facilitation skills to do it, you've got to network until you find somebody who can come and help you facilitate. So it's a really important part of managing a network and managing a group is managing the norming, forming storming stage of a group. Now, I'm not going to talk too much more about it tonight, but I just want to put it out there. It can go wrong if you don't manage it well. And there's another thing linked to this is what I call matching skills to jobs and matching people to skills and jobs. Because you, someone might start out saying, I'll do that, I'll do that. And pretty soon it becomes obvious that they don't have the skills for it. 
that their their sense of themselves is much greater than their actual practical ability. So what you want to be able to do is um, help that person find another job that they're much more able to do. And that takes a bit of diplomacy and a few cups of coffee. But you definitely don't want people doing jobs in your network if they can't do it. And you've got to call it out. You can't just sort of put it up with it. And the last thing I want to talk about is what can go wrong is um, legal protection. <laughs> like when we're doing this sort of political work or when you're forming groups, you've got to be, I think, you've got to be incorporated. So you've got the legal protection and you've got to have your IT well organised and you've got to have your privacy policy organised. So you've actually got to do the, the things correctly at the beginning. And again, it seems to me that if you haven't actually got the people in your own network, like by design, if you don't know any lawyers who are going to be friendly and help you, then it's really appropriate to pay somebody to do the job so that you set your organisation up in the early days um, and it's, and it's, it's, it's well-designed legally. The governance is good. So what I'm talking here about tonight is when you get serious about networking to get things done and you're not basically work, you're working on that left-hand side of the diagram. When you want to form a group and that group actually wants to make change in the politics of our world, then you need to be clear about it. You need to be focused about it. You need to be careful. You need to care for your network. And you also need to manage the risks because things can go wrong. This is going to, we're going to, in a minute, all these um, slides are going to be available to you. In fact, we'll send them to you. But this is the table that I reckon is really useful, is that you can do the networking map, but then you've got to sit down and say, okay, purpose, I need to find a facilitator. Who do I know, name of somebody who'll know somebody or somebody who is a facilitator? What will I say to them? What's my elevator pitch? And then the doing is, am I going to, how am I going to connect up with them? So you've got to put that in and then you put the date to be completed by. So this networking by design table is the beginning process for really um, coming strategic in how you do it. So we at um, Community Independence have been developing what we've called our CIP toolkit and it's available online at that address and it's full of tips and resources and case studies, um, stories about how you actually go about doing this. Uh, so it's a starting place and it either says, okay, here I am, down, if you can see that image down the bottom, so it's for people by themselves or people in a group or in a bigger group or in a little group or a really big group. So it's got tips and resources for, for groups at all of those different stages. So it's up on our webpage, which is communityindependenceproject.org, and then you'll find it under CIP Toolkit. So it captures a lot of what we've been talking about tonight. Okay, so I want to move on to the next slide, Liz, which is um, really seriously bringing together some of the things that I've been talking about. Uh, and these, um, like I know you know it, but I just cannot express enough that if you're going to be effective in getting political change in a community, you can't do 15 things. You can do one, probably you can do one thing and do it well. So picking what you're doing and getting your purpose clear will guide you for the, it's called front end work, but doing the front end work will make a huge difference as you move along. So I'm just going to go down these characteristics. Clear purpose is really important. The second idea of recipro reciprocity, and that means that you you don't you get out what you give, but you don't necessarily get what you give. But the network works because people do generous things with each other. And in our community independence project, and in all our work with community, it's about playing it forward. It's about doing things now, knowing that other people will benefit from it, and then the whole country will benefit through our, our generosity. But you don't necessarily, you can't go, oh, no, I've already done my bit. You've got to be generous with your time and resources. And, of course, boundaries exist, but generosity makes such a difference. 
The fourth characteristic of this effective networking, it's based on relationships <laughs> as opposed to being transactional. And th this means that so you, we create time to sit down and have coffee with people and get to know people and we really like people <laughs> um, and we do it for a whole lot of reasons. But basically, it's when people feel trusted and respected and loved, they'll want to be part of your network, where if they feel it's transactional, you're just doing this to get something from somebody and that you'll expect a payback, it, it doesn't work so well. So this idea of being warm and generous and kind um, and paying it forward just makes such a difference to the vibe we're trying to create. And then the final characteristic I want to just talk to you about is what we call renewal. Networks die if they don't get new blood. <laughs> People get bored, they turn off, um, doesn't work. So what you're trying to do is to create a way of bringing new people into your network all the time. And so that means being inclusive, it's being welcoming, um, it's introducing people to each other. And then people will say to their friends, well, you know, I went to, you know, I met the Voices Friend Eye people and they're, they're, they're kind and they're generous and they're actually having an event, um, Kay and Rex, uh, on uh, Thursday the 18th at the pub in Wodonga. Why don't you come along? And you invite new people to come and come to our events. So you spread the network through reaching out to people. So there's some of the characteristics. But networks need activity. <laughs> if they're not doing things, if things aren't happening, they don't work. And if things are only happening in a click, they don't work. <laughs> so they actually do need to be thinking of that, you know, the six degrees of separation. So it's really hard to network by yourself sitting at home. Of course, if you've got a phone and Zoom, you can do it, but it doesn't happen by wishing. You've got to actually do something. Network activity works really well when you start sharing information and you start connecting people. So, for example, just then in the break, um, somebody came in late and they said, oh, I'm from um, the Gold Coast. And Tina was able to say, great, we can link you to other people from the Gold Coast. So straight away, we do the networking by connecting people up. Then they go and do their own work. But we were the, the connecting. And WhatsApp and Slack and Zoom are really important for doing that. The other activity, look, it absolutely works, is a conference. You can't go past organising a small gathering. Um, I call them conferences. They could be conventions. And so I'm going to talk a little bit in a minute about the convention we're organising on the 3rd of June to bring all our networks together so we can start sharing information, connecting people up, um, doing work. And the reason why CIP has a convention is we want people to network. And that's the sort of excuse to bring everybody together. But there are other things that you can do. You can run workshops. You can do door knocking. There's lots of different things you can do that actually create an event. And then when you've got the event, it really gives you the excuse to use your social media because then you can get on Facebook, you can get on Twitter, you can get wherever you're going and saying, we're having this event. And so then lots of other people who might not be in your immediate network learn about it and can come. So, for example, Indi, we're launching our book. Um, we've got an event in Melbourne. We've got an event in Wodonga, Wangaratta, Benalla, Sydney, Canberra, and we're going to use those events to be networking and to, to bring more people into the, um, the fold. Another really clever activity is gathering and sharing information. And so I talk about surveys here, and that's sort of what our kitchen table conversation did. It wasn't really a survey, but it acted like bringing people together and then we could share information and people started, had a task to do, an activity to do, but petitions work, letters work, writing reports on situations all work. And I'm going to stress here the activity of making time for meeting and greeting. And I have to laugh at myself a little bit because when I first started out networking, I was what would be called a task oriented person. I'd dive into what we had to do. Let's get underway. Where's the agenda? How are we doing it? And my friends would say, oh, just go a little bit easy, Kathy. Give people a chance. And Jill's laughing, I see. Give people a chance to talk to each other, you know, get to know each other. Spend a few minutes at the beginning letting people just connect and find their voice. 
And I just cannot stress how important it is to give people time for their voices to be used early. And so that's why tonight, you know, our first major activity was letting you work in small groups um, and talk to each other because that's the most important thing is people connecting and setting up relationships. So in all your work, can I just stress making time at the beginning and making time at the end for relationships and for talking and debriefing. And then this final activity <laughs> is making it easy to connect. And again, I can't stress how important it is to have name tags, and I, which is what I love about Zoom because all our names are up there. But name tags are really good because um, one, someone has to ask you what your name is and then you wear your name tag so you can go around and introduce yourself much easier if you've got a name tag. But other things are really important, like a business card, I find them really useful. Um, and then if you've got a function at the end of it to circulate the names and with permission, of course, the names and contact details of the people who are there so that other people can network. Now, I'm just going to stop talking there a little bit because we've just got a few minutes to go. But before I do, Tina, I'm, I'm going to ask you here because we were talking before about how you could use the example of networking. And we basically mentioned that example of the voice to parliament. Would you just talk, like to talk a little bit about um, uh, networking and using the voice to parliament? What's happening in your neck of the woods with this one? Uh, we're um, we're doing a lot in uh, Warringah and are, are working with uh, volunteers that want to um, to put their hand up to support uh, the voice. We'll be uh, using all our tools in the in the toolkit. We'll be doing the kitchen table conversations. We'll be doing all of the community contact work. Um, going at talking to people at uh, in in shopping centres and bus stops and so on. We we'll actually will be doing uh, some door knocking as well where um, we're going to be holding events and small and large events and we're also hoping to connect uh, with other electorates as well so that we can do um, cross-electorate work and, uh, and expand our networks there. Uh, importantly, we don't want to reinvent the wheel and so we are asking people as much as possible about the resources that we can um, share with with them and find out um, ways that they're doing things, and also we're talking about resources, uh, the the work that the Victorian Women's Trust is doing on the kitchen table conversations, wonderful documentation that people can use there. So again, uh, just as as Kathy's been talking about using our myriad networks um, from our friends, from our works to organisations that we're involved with you know, other voices groups, other electorates, just, you know, the, the tentacles go out and um, we are we are connecting as, as much as we can. And a um, bit of friendly competition between all the electorates of the ballot who can get the highest yes vote. Um, so, you yeah, know, uh, apart from being all incredibly um, committed uh, to this important nation-building uh, exercise. Thanks. So, can you have in mind, Kathy? That's great. And I wanted you just to tell that story because sometimes it's hard to get started networking. And I just, if you're looking for a something you're concerned about, something something to begin networking about, then this um, the, the yes together, um, the voice to parliament is a really really good place to start your network and start building up contacts. So if you're interested in this, can I say here's what I would be doing: is I'd be finding three friends, two, yourself and two others, and say, let's get together and have a coffee to talk about what's going to happen in our community about the yes vote. Would you be interested in meeting me for coffee next week at X to do this? And I think every single one of us could find two or three friends to do it. And within your friends, I'm also talking family, um, the younger generation, the older generation, because they'll also have networks. So the two or three of you get together, you get your elevator pitch organised and you say, okay, we need a little event. So why don't we run a little workshop using um, on one of the resources that are there or the, the Yes Together resources, and Lana might put it in there. Why don't we have a little workshop when we get together and we that's the event and we invite people to come? And you might only get five, you might get six. 
the number itself doesn't matter. It's that six people will know if they all they all know lots of other people. So slowly the network will get underway. So I'm I'm getting towards the end of tonight, and I just wanted to provide a little bit of a summary of the two levels we were working at. One is we wanted to give you a chance to network and get to know each other, and there's been quite a bit of that happening in the chat. Two, we wanted to talk about all of us already network, like you'd be dead if you weren't able to use your networks to get things done. But the focus tonight is being strategic and doing it by design because you've got a very specific purpose. Um, And I'm hoping the purpose would be to get engaged in politics. And it would be lovely if part of that politics is getting to make your seat marginal and then eventually getting your own member of parliament elected. But that's a big thing. If you want to start on a smaller topic, then this whole idea of together, yes, is a really good um, movement that you could become attached to uh, and, and, and do some good work. But it won't happen by staying at home. <laughs> And it won't happen by not doing anything. And it won't happen by worrying about everything. It only happens by making that first phone call, um, getting getting out and meeting people, and then sharing the love and creating the warmth. And on that note, it's about 25 past uh, eight. I think we're almost ready to wrap up. But before I do, I'm going to throw to Jill because she's been listening to all of this. And Jill, have you got any sort of comments to make towards the end that um, – that perhaps I've missed as we go through this? Uh, So firstly, I want to say, as per usual, you've given just a mountain of gold tonight. So thank you, Cathy. Um, But I think really, um, from my experience, the generosity of bringing your heart into your networks pays dividends enormously. If you can do that relationship building, then it's really important uh, to keep the group feeling good about themselves. Um, But the other thing that I also wanted to mention is that if you're bringing people together with an intention, there's nothing like the feeling of being hijacked. Mm. So if you've got a purpose, then to know, for me to know what the purpose is, I can then bring my whole mind to it. Whereas if it's like, I'll come and have a coffee and then we're going to talk about getting rid rid of trucks out of the main street of my local town, it's like, oh, hang on, I feel like I've been brought here under false pretenses. But mostly it's about, if you tell me what it's about, I can bring my mind to it. Whereas I'll bring my surprise behaviour to it if it's sort of just comes out of left field. So that would be my other thing is be generous about that. Yeah. And that reminds me, Jill, one final thing. When I was planning tonight, um, one of my friends said to me, the biggest barrier to effective networking is your own head. Because what you'd do is one, you think, you'll think, oh, no, they wouldn't want to come to that or how could I ask them? And so you don't do something because you're a bit scared of what you've imagined. And what I've absolutely learned is let them make the decision. You give them the invitation and then they can decide if they want to come or not come. But if you don't invite them, they can't make that decision. And so many of us, we second guess our networks. And that stops all these people who could have been involved don't get involved because you were too uh, insecure in the first place. Mm. So that's why that networking table is really important because you put down the names and then you let them decide whether they want to come or not. And they, and they, I have been amazed by how many people go when I when I say, "Here's what we're doing. Are you interested?" They go, "Yeah," and they come, "Oh my God!" Fancy them saying yes. And they say, oh, it's so good. And they go, thank you, Kathy. Thank you for organising it. They go, no, no, don't thank me. Thank you for coming. So don't second get yourself ever. Reach out and be bold and, and reach out to people like people you don't even know now, but you could know if mm. you were brave enough to let them go. Mm. So on that note, I think we're going to finish. Mm. Liz, uh, everything's up online. Is this tonight? Can you just check everything's where it needs to be? It absolutely is. Yep. It is, Kathy. And the link's in the chat. And the link's in the chat. So for a few minutes, if you haven't already got the link to cut it, um, to go on, and then everything is there. And the toolkit's there as well. And that's another really good excuse to get a few people together to actually just work through the toolkit would be another excuse to get people started. 
Anyhow, thank you very, very much, everybody, for coming on and staying um, and being part of the group. And I look forward to seeing all of you on Zoom on the 3rd of June at the CIP convention. So on that note, I'll say good night. See you on the 3rd. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> hey, 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 Rex. Goodbye. <laughs>